The Brawling Brutes do a promo on Out the Mud. This is awesome, but it was also hysterical. They're coming for them. So they're also from the streets. Different streets, but still the streets. They're just scrapping all their lives, whether it's in rugby, the rugby field or bars or clubs. They don't run up on people when their backs are turned. We'll look you right in the eye and knock your teeth down your throat. And they're, they're out in the streets in what's supposed to be England. Uh, I'm presuming it wasn't. But regardless, it's like a really, really good promo. But all I could think is how it's objectively hilarious, factually hysterical, that they have basically turned these guys into the new Grizzled Young Veterans. Yeah. Because that, that literally I thought, hey, the Grizzled Young Veterans are back. Oh, wait, that's, uh, that's, that's Butch and uh, Ridge. Yeah. So that made me laugh. Lola Vice and Electra Lopez versus Roxanne Perez and Kalani Jordan. This match was fine. Totally. Dude, I thought Kalani and Lola looked much, much better this week than they did in the tournament finals last week. Well, you know, you had a tag match here and Roxanne was in there yeah. and she's great. I did like Ariana comes out before the match. Yes. And she's in her gown. She says, I would love to wish these four ladies the bestest of luck tonight. That's right. And she loves you all. The bestest of luck. That was touching, Booker T notes. <laughs> and he was so deadpan about it. So yeah, Kalani got a hot tag, yeah, and yeah. it was fine till she tried something involving a cartwheel and fell down. Mm. I said this before. Stop doing gymnastics. You don't need to. Yeah. Your wrestling is good enough. And they hit the play of the day. Electra broke it up. Did somebody else do a play of the day within the past week? That sounds familiar, but yes. Anyway, she had a play of the day. Well, I mean, oh, uh. What's his name on TNA? Oh, that was it. That was it. Yeah. All right. So uh, the heels try a double team. Roxanne kicks them together. Hits Pop Rocks. Takes out one with a, the, the the low pay. And Kalani finishes with a split leg moonsault. They only have like four minutes, but they got the absolute most out of that. Yeah, four this was this was yeah. so much better than I expected. And then Carmen Petrovic attacked Ariana. So Ariana is doing a promo. reasons unknown. She's doing a promo. She doesn't like talking. Yeah. I, so much happened in the show that didn't even occur to me to ask why. Uh, that's the first thing I asked. Maybe she thought of the like, all Ariana did was goes. Hold on a second. I would like to announce the winner, the winner of this match. And all of a sudden, Carmen attacks her. And my first thought was, what did you do that for? Maybe she thought they that had was very out. mean. Yeah, yeah. She Ariana says Roxanne and Kalani have lucked out, but the real winners. And that's when uh, Carmen attacked her. So we still don't know who the real winners are. <laughs> Joe Gacy selfie promo. Just skip it, dude. Right. I can't. Yeah. No that, spooky shit. That was... Well, this wasn't even spooky. It was just... I don't know. That was creepy as hell, is what Vic called it. Well, yeah. When the announcers say it's creepy as hell, that yeah. means it was supposed to be spooky. Well, spooky, I, I take to mean like supernatural things, which he's also done at some points. This is just crazy, crazy, crazy guy. Ilya Dragunov promo about... He had just dispatched Carmelo Hayes. He was totally drained. He turned the corner, and he got dropped by force. Now, Baron Corbin, you are my radar. We've met before, but I am different with this title on my shoulder, and the only person that can slay the dragon is the dragon himself. And Baron Corbin's watching all this on a monitor. Up step Idris and Malik and Hank and Tank, and they all say he should be worried, and he blows them off. Otis versus Drew Gulak. This was a match that made me think, you know, maybe we should go back to those old superstars. <laughs> Those old 1993 Raws. Basic, simple, by the numbers, very effective wrestling match. Shine, heat, comeback. I loved, I loved and this match. Oh, this is so wacky. And he does his forward roll spot. They're chanting his name. And, like, Drew Gulak is, I mean, he's been around forever. But, like, Otis hits whatever in the corner. And Drew is supposed to fall in position for the Caterpillar. And he is just, like, not anywhere near the right position. No, he's not in position for anything. He may as well have been on fucking Mars. He's just, like, in a totally random spot in the middle of the ring. So Otis has to do a caterpillar away from him. Yes. And then leap onto him. Right. I was like, fuck me. But what makes... are you doing? <laughs> and then he grabbed him and he fucking pop-up powerbombed this guy to straight to fucking hell is what he did. And I laughed. Best thing on the show. Loved it. And a my, minor correction. Here is where Alpha Academy did the worst dance party of all time. It would not have made sense earlier. They lost that match. This is no disrespect to Kevin Owens. He's awesome. But he needs to just keep doing the stunner and just give this pop-up powerbomb notice. Sure. 
Because when Otis does the pop up power bomb, it looks like it would pin God. I mean, <laughs> God, he just fucking this Otis. He'd be my champ, brother. I'm telling you, he would be my champion. Kiana James, congratulations. He Tim is my champion. He's your champion. Yes, yes, champion of your heart. Kiana, congratulates Tiffany on her win and getting into the Iron Survivor Challenge. She vows to qualify herself. They're going to carry this entire division on their backs. They can't let Fallon or Roxanne or anyone else win this match. It's got to be one of them. And they both know who's winning, right? Right. And they walk away. And also, Dante, Chen, and whoever are just walking around backstage or in the back with their faces painted. They're a new team. Hmm. Apparently, this was them getting together. <laughs> well, they did it last week. Which is significantly worse than the debut of Mariah May. <laughs> At least that's true. At least Mariah May was acknowledged. We have seen 500 wacky Chase U segments. This was the wackiness turned up to a thousand percent. JC Jane is alone in a new room in Chase U. The walls are blue. There's a map of the territories in the wall. And uh, she is just ranting to nobody. No, there's students there. Well, there were. Although when the camera cut to them later, we realized we, it was very clear they were in a totally different room. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's a big room. <laughs> So, it's a university. It, it may, it's on land. She may have been on doing this that's, on Zoom. That's uh, that's canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tony D's associates, we assume, come in. They have you a, don't say an envelope <laughs> for uh, Andre Chase. Two, a uh, couple of questionable types. I wrote. There's actually three of them. There were three of them. There was a lady in yes, charge. Two dudes and a a, a, a lady. Uh, they say, give this envelope to Andre Chase. Make sure he knows who it's from. So JC, of course, is a horrible person. So she opens it. She is shocked by what she finds. Chase walks in on her, says what she's doing is illegal. You can't open somebody else's mail. It's nothing you want to get involved with either. Then Duke and Thea arrive. They want to know what everyone's talking about. Somewhere in here, it's announced they have a title defense against Tony D and Stax next week. It's news to Duke. He was not informed of their title defense next week. Andre says, that's right. We have to get ready. Class is dismissed. Everyone's free to go. And then they cut to the students. And this is not only in a totally different room. This may have been taped weeks ago. This may have been filmed for an entirely different Chase U segment and inserted here. So everyone leaves Andre alone. And he's left with his letter. And he is in deep, deep despair. They used 87 cameras for this. They were playing intense music like it's a spy thriller. Blatant multiple sets. Loved it. Complete wackiness. Oh, yeah. They should have that uh, shot of the students being happy the class is dismissed, and it should be like stock footage, where every time they get dismissed, they just play the exact, <laughs> exact same, same footage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See how long before people pick up on it? That's, that's hey, that guy got big white eyes again. Yep, sure did. Bodie Hayward's back. <laughs> Brandon says, maybe Andre Chase has killed somebody and Tony knows about it. Could That'd be. That'd be a twist. Could be. Some guy failed his class. And he gets very angry. He's got, he's got... He does have an anger management issue. He does. He, he yeah. may have cursed at somebody so badly they died. Mm -hmm. yeah. Diajack versus Tyler Bate. They had a fun main event. We have, uh... You know what this reminded me of was that, uh, that MJF match, where if this would have been on pay-per-view and they got an extra 10 minutes, it would have been fucking awesome. Sure. But uh, they got like a you know semi short TV match. It was good, and uh, they did some cool that. stuff. Tyler yeah. Bate had a big superplex on the giant. Uh, all the big moves: the discus boot, the rebound lariat, throwing suplex, and then Dijak lands on his feet on a superplex. Hits a discus boot for two. They counter finishes for a while. Dijak Dijak hits feast your eyes and wins. A good TV main event. Dijak the first to qualify for the Iron Survivor Challenge for the men. Oh, this guy's got a good one. Maybe Tony D has been funding Chase U because Andre's been in debt. Now he's coming to collect. I think that's more likely. Yeah. So Andre had to borrow money to keep his school open. And, oh, uh, man. And uh, has Sad behind on his payments. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a little protection Chase racket. You. Protection racket going on. Trick Williams arrives an hour and 54 minutes late for a two-hour show. And Vic tells us he has been avoiding Carm Carmelo all week, and I still don't know why. Because he wants to do this in front of the people, Vinny. I guess so. Uh, the legends will be picking Iron Survivor qualifiers. We already saw Mick Foley, of, of course, and he'll be joined by JBL, Lita, and the most intriguing, Jerry Lawler. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine Jerry Lawler watching this NXT roster, trying to pick the guys who most impress him. Who remind him the most of a young king? So Carmelo Hayes comes out for the main event promo. He immediately calls out Trick. And he starts... Trying to, uh, he's not apologizing. He understands why Trick is upset. He's trying to make peace. 
The roadblocks are part of the journey. All of my championships, I share the glory with you. Without Trick, there'd be no Mellow. Exactly, Trick says. I do nothing but put Trick Mellow first. It's easy to say that when you got the ball, but now that I'm taking shots, why can't you be there for me? In fact, did you... And Mellow cuts him off. Did I do what, Trick? Did I believe in you? Yes! Uh, you're bragging about doing good entrances, and uh, they go back and forth for a while, and somewhere... I keep seeing this a lot. Uh, Trick says that he never saw who attacked him. And upon hearing this, Mellow is shocked. This is not what he expected. He's taken it back. He wants Trick to repeat this. Make sure he's very clear and understands. Trick never saw who attacked him. He still doesn't know. And so, finally, Trick sees this confused look in Mellow's eyes and asked, flatly, bluntly asked him to his face, Did you attack me? The air then interrupted by my new favorite wrestler, Lexus King. Because Lexus King comes out in his first in-ring promo with his company, and he gets in the ring, and his... Not quite his first line, but very early, he quotes Def Leppard. And not like a hit. Suddenly he asks, look what you've done to this rock and roll clown, or love is like a bomb, maybe come and get it on. He gets in there, and he quotes Desert Song from Retroactive, a collection of B-sides released in 1993, the year he was born. Dark and dirty like you have never seen, a mind so twisted with thoughts so unclean. I hope this goes through the entire album. It's a great album. So, uh, oh, also, by the way, Def Leppard did a song called Rocket, which was once the ring music for Flying Brian. So, keep that in mind. So he's running his mouth on both of them, and finally Trick tries to punch him, but Lexus ducks, and Trick hits Mellow. Well, the key is that he gets in the ring, and he says, uh, I'm here to help you get to the bottom of this. Everybody knows who did this, don't they? But it could be somebody new, somebody trying to make their name here. Trick, are you sure it was Mello who attacked you? And Trick's telling him to get out of here. And then that's when uh, Lexus says, I want you to say what everyone in this building is thinking. That's when Trick throws the punch and he accidentally hits Mello. Mm -hmm. So Lexus King last week did say, wait till you see what I'll do or what I've already done. That's true. So that's true. did Lexus attack him or is... Uh, I mean, Mello's reaction was, was uh, he, he seemed quite guilty when he found out the Trick didn't know who attacked he, him. He seemed to realize, I may be able to get it off the hook yet yeah. for, 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 my, for my crimes. But uh, Trick pulls Mello up and hugs him. They did a hug when the show was over. Mello, Mello was clearly very unhappy about the whole situation. Yeah. And he, never did, he still has not answered the question. He's not, he has never denied attacking Trick. You know, Brandon brings up a good suggestion. Perhaps it was Elia who attacked Trick. Also did not want to have a three-way. No one's ever accused Zelia. That's true. It wouldn't make sense and uh, really wouldn't make sense for him to have done it. But that is that should be a suspect. I mean, if this were real. But it's probably either Trick or, or Lexus King or maybe both of them. Ooh, I thought of that. Yeah, yeah. a lot of ways. I like storylines like this. I don't know where it's going to go, but they've done a great job stretching it out. And uh, there's a lot of different options about who it could be. And then, of course, we don't know who's going to be a babyface heel, who's going to turn, who's not going to turn. Is Carmelo going to turn? If Lexus did it, does Carmelo turn? Does Carmelo turn because his friend didn't trust him? Does Trick turn on his friend because he doesn't trust him? I don't know! But I like it. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.